So hello, my name is Jutta, I'm from Lithuania. It's a great honor and a pleasure to be here among you guys and to share some stuff, some history facts about Lithuania, even though they are not that positive as they could be since we are talking about Holocaust. So as you can see, the date in 1941, Lithuania wasn't an ex ex exception when we were talking about Holocaust and um, my country was greatly affected by the events that affected your country too. So I will share just like some slight facts about it. So, okay, here you can see the map of Lithuania, the country that I live in. Uh, so uh, here you can see those dots are the places where the mass killings were happening in Lithuania, where the po pogroms were held. And this map is actually is a Holocaust as atlas of atlas of Lithuania, and it was established in 2010 uh, of the State Museum of Jewish History, along with the Auschwitz Memory Service, uh, and it was launched as a historical project. And basically, this is the best source if you want to know like what happened in Lithuania and especially the, like um, the geography, and so you can see it all in this map. And unfortunately, uh, it was happening, as you can see, like all over the country. So yeah, as you can see in the given diagram, the Lithuania population consisted of 7% of Jews back in 1941, and there was appro approximately uh, 208 and 210,000 of Jews population, and 95% of that were murdered during the Holocaust, so it's about 190 and 195 uh, thousands of people and um, Jews formed around 7% as I said and before the war the city of Vilnius, the capital city, uh, was known as the Jerusalem of Lithuania or the North Jerusalem and Jews made up more than a third of the city and contributed to its intellectual and creative elite so it was a really big and important part of our society. Okay so here in the picture as you can see not this one particularly because it's mainly on the wall, but whatever. Uh, you can see two news newspapers. The one on the I really find it hard to say which side. Where is that? So here you can see like the Jewish newspaper written in Jewish language, and here you can see uh, the same paper, but it was some sort of a supplement in Lithuanian language because the Jews. They understood that if we live in Lithuania, we have to make everything to make sure that we get in touch with Lithuanians and that we go along together really well. So they were making this kind of a supplement which shows that uh, Jews were aware of the fact that they need to integrate in Lithuania. So I consider that to be a nice thing. Okay, and uh, some strong facts about historical situations. So in 1940, June, Lithuania was occupied by Soviet Union, so that was the year before the actual Holocaust. And one year later, the Soviet Union was attacked by Nazi Germany, so that means that Lithuania was attacked also since it was like the part of uh, the Soviet Union. And all this year, since the Soviet Union occupied Lithuania, uh, the anti-Semitism in Lithuania was growing because Lithuanian people in one side blame Jews for Soviet occupation because Jews were on the Russian side and not on the German side for like obvious reasons. So Lithuanians needed someone to blame and that was not only the Russians and the Soviet government but also the Jews. Um, so that is the reason why the German military, when they came into Lithuania in 1941, they were uh, welcomed as liberators and every Lithuanian thought that, yeah, now we're going to be free and now we're going to gain our independence and stuff like that, but unfortunately it wasn't true. Uh, there was this thing called Lithuanians Activist Front, uh, which was established during the Soviet occupation and the main thing that they wanted to do was to gain the independence for Lithuania, so actually they were spreading anti-Semitism moves all over the place. So people were uh, started to get involved into Holocaust, not only to please Germans, but also because the leaders of the Lithuanian activist front were telling them to do that also. Okay, here you can see a poster, uh, which was all over the place in the capital city and other cities. And here you can see, like the main, uh, the main character is obviously a Jew, and the the writings uh, up means that a Jew is your eternal enemy, 
and on the downside is like Stalin and Jews, they are a big uh, group of bastards or something like that. And posters like this were really popular, so you can feel like the anti-Semitism moods were really, really strong. And, and yeah, probably all of the Lithuanians, or the majority of Lithuanians, were like not into Jews at all. Oh, here we can see some technical stuff that going on. Okay, so um, now, right now I'm going to talk more about the ghettos. Uh, ghettos in Lithuania were established at five different uh, cities, and of course the biggest of them were the capital city and the second biggest city, Kaunas and Vilnius. And uh, the ghettos were established and infrastructure infrastructure quite well because they had the open municipality, hospitals, schools, cultural places, and police. And that is why maybe that might be one of the reasons why Jews, in one way, felt sort of safe there because they had like their own city or something like that. But unfortunately, that was only an illusion. And here you can see a map of Vilnius ghetto. Here are some pictures, actually. When I live in Venice right now, I can recognize the streets, and actually this is one of the main streets in our old town. I can't recognize this place, but this is Venice ghetto. Uh, Kona's ghetto is, yeah, here you can see the map. Here are some pictures. I'm not aware of how this place looks right now. But yeah, they were quite big, and there were lots of Jews living there. Uh, this is a quite special place in Lithuania. It looks awesome but the history is not that good it's called the ninth fort and the ninth fort in Kolnas in the second biggest city of Lithuania was built in the 19th century in order to improve city's defense system but when the Nazis occupied Lithuania they converted this place into a pogrom place where they were making their mass killings and um, and since then this place is called the fort of death and um, yeah, and right now uh, there is a huge museum which reminds us of all the events uh, that happened in Lithuania back in back during uh, the World War. Okay, some some more history. So, former Lithuanian president back in the day in the 40s, his name was Kazis Grinus, and and he's like with other few politicians presented a memorandum to the general of officer of Germany. Uh, to stop the policy that he was making right oh, like in that day, but of course they were exiled for that So even though you were a president of Lithuania, that doesn't mean a thing and there was nothing you can do about it And in the end of 1942 Germans closed the legally printed anti-semitical newspaper and started to do everything related to Holocaust by themselves So since then Lithuanians weren't involved that much as they were before yeah, and another interesting thing that there were Jewish partisans groups in the forests because the only way that you can survive a uh, holocaust in Lithuania was to go to the forest and to join the partisan group. Uh, church also played an important but a bad role in this period of time. There were some priests who tried to help people, Jewish people especially, but the official position was not to take part in the events at all. And other priests praised Hitler and the main mood in the church was also anti-Semitic. Christians uh, were sure that Jews are the ones to blame, to blame for killing Jesus <laughs> and everyone's confessions that were made uh, during the war were forgiven. And the other thing is the righteous among the nations. You probably know that those are the peoples who helped uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, during the World War. Uh, there were 831 this kind of people in Lithuania and 14, 14 of them are priests and during this time around uh, 3,000 Jews were saved by Lithuanian people all over the country. Yeah and also we in Lithuania and all those places that you saw previously on the map we have like all those uh, commemoration monuments that we just wear with flowers here also so we're doing something to remember the, the things that we've done and to memorize the history of Jews. Uh, also, we have like other things uh, in order to remember the history. So there are lots of books and movies created about these events. And here on this side, you can see Bani Sroaga. This is uh, one of the most popular um, books in Lithuania. It's called Diabu Mishka. So it would be like Forest of Gods. And it's all about uh, concentration camps and the history of Holocaust. 
and it's written in the form of a diary, and we have to read it at school. It's like we must read it at school, so everybody knows the, this thing. And the red book is actually it's written recently by an author, Ruta Vanagaita, and it was published like a month ago in Lithuania, so people are still talking about it back in my country because this is actually the very first source, the very first book in our history that reveals all the criminals and all the bad stuff we did, Lithuanian nationality people did uh, during the <coughs> Holocaust. So that is a quite a big accomplishment, I would say. Okay, and there are some issues we face today is that since its independence in 1991, that's about 25 years ago, Lithuania has failed to punish a single one of its own Holocaust war criminals. Just when Lithuania had safely joined the European Union and NATO in 2004, uh, the state prosecutors began publicly tearing the Jewish partisans who fought the Nazis as betrayers of the nations. But not a single Lithuania war criminal has sat one day in Lithuanian prison at all. At the same time, the government of, for example, Soviet Union sentenced about 250 people for death penalty for those kind of uh, crimes. Uh, and yeah, okay, so this is the place in my capital city, Vilnius, it's in the main street, and this is the Museum of Genocide Victims in Vilnius, so the name of the museum might make some sort of assumption that there must be some historical facts about Holocaust and about Jewish people in Vilnius, but actually there are only ex expo ex exhibits about Soviet Union and about Soviet uh, repression in Lithuania. So that's, I consider that to be like um, a big loss for the Lithuanian community to, uh, to put the Jewish people history aside. So maybe that will improve in the future, I hope so. So that was it I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>